swim baits are one of those things that catch walleyes all year round, anywhere a walleye lives. It's no secret. Here's a couple of things that I do right now because post spawn walleyes and swim baits can sometimes be the easiest, most efficient way to cover water and catch fish. I'm fishing these shallower, like say six to 10 foot areas, edges of flats on tops of flats, a 3.5 inch, this is a Storm Largo Shad. I think three and a half inch is kind of like the most universal all round size for swim baits. I'll sometimes fish big four inch, especially later in the summer. Sometimes drop down to a little three inch when they're being fussy. Three and a half inch just gets it done most days. And when I'm using like a three and a half inch Largo Shad for spawn walleyes right now, I really like this VMC Hybrid swim bait jig head. It's got this screw lock system, so you can snap these, pop these, catch fish on these until that plastic just finally gives out because you actually screw the head on there so it's not constantly sliding down. It's really important for swim baits to be straight or else you're gonna get it turning when you're going too fast. It's just not gonna look natural. So I love that little screw lock. These have a little bit thinner hook. They're still beefy and strong, but I really like these, especially when it's like a slow rolling retrieve. If I'm doing something, say summertime, snapping plastics up shallower, that's when I'll bump up to like a stouter hook. You can see just how much thicker gauge that is. That's a VMC boxer jig. So it's just a beefier hook. I'm using all around beefier setup in the summer times. Seven one medium, extra fast, braid 10, 12, 15 pound fluorocarbon leader and snapping those baits. But right now, this time of year, say you got about 60 degree water temps, Maybe it's getting a little bit warmer than that and those walleyes are finally starting to feed back up after they slid off and we're in post-spawn recovery mode. I kind of fish it two different ways. I'm either slow rolling it or I'm just kind of doing little snaps. Not like the big rips and snaps like summer, but I'm just doing kind of lifts down, lift down, just to get that swim bait, that cadence kind of varying to see if you can trigger a bite. Some days that's the deal. Some days they want that slow, steady retrieve. But this time of year, I really like this jig head. I like fishing them on eight pound, 10 pound braid, either or. I always run a fluorocarbon leader. And like I said, I bump it up to 10, 12, 15 when I'm snapping in cabbage weeds. Once we get to that early summer, summer bite. But for the next two, three weeks, about an eight pound fluorocarbon leader, maybe 10 if you're fishing snarly rocks just an eight foot leader on some braid. As far as jig head sizes go, a 5 16 ounce in that hybrid swim bait jig head is kind of a great all around size. I'll go down as low as an eighth of an ounce if I'm throwing it up really skinny, three, four foot rock. Uh, or if the wind starts to pick up, I'll bump that head size up to about a three eighths ounce. Completely opposite from summertime. Summertime when I'm snapping cabbage weeds, coontail, and really ripping that bait and trying to trigger a reaction bite like a jigging wrap, except you're throwing these things in places jigging wraps can't get. That's when I'll do a three quarter ounce, sometimes an ounce, but usually about a three quarter ounce to really make that bait move. It also depends what size swim bait you're using. If you're using say a three and a half inch, let me grab a couple here, this will make more sense then. Say you're using a three inch swim bait versus a four inch, this is so much more plastic, so much more buoyant. You couldn't fish this thing on an eighth ounce, quarter ounce head. It's gonna fall like a weightless fluke wheel, you know? That's why you gotta fish it on at least a three ace and bump it up even heavier. Likewise, if you put this thing on a three quarter ounce head, it would fall like a 22 caliber bullet, you know? So matching your swim bait head to how deep you're fishing, the wind, and the size and buoyancy of your plastic is important. But that three inch to three and a half inch, about a quarter, five sixteenths, as soon as I get up to that four inch boot till size, I will not fish this on anything lighter than a three eighths, but preferably half, three quarter. Let me show you a couple of cool things about the Largo Shad and why I really like that. It's got a couple of qualities that you look for in every swim bait. One, number one, is the action. It needs to have a lot of action, not just the tail kicking, but also that little belly wobble. And to get that action, the baits have to be soft. 
But also the second thing I look for in swim baits is durability. I don't want to throw a swim bait, catch one fish, it's shot. Or even worse, you catch no fish, but just from throwing it 40, 50 times, it's shot. So I really fell in love with the Largo Shads because they're super durable, but you can still catch six, seven, eight fish on them before they fall apart. Sometimes more, sometimes less, just depends, but they really balance that durability with the uh, actual movement of the bait. And these do have a really nice kind of belly wobble when they come through the water. So you've got, imagine that tail kicking at the same time that this bait is kind of rolling, shimmying. Just an awesome combo. And you can actually adjust the action on these, which is pretty cool. They got this little, little deal here on the tail. When it's on there, this little tendon kind of restricts the action of the bait. So colder the water is, the less action I guess you want. You want it a little more subtle, a little slower, now, when the water starts warming up or the bite is snapping, peel that little tendon off of there. It's kind of like taking the seat belt off of it and you're gonna get more range of motion of that tail. And then also flex them, give them a little pull. I learned this trick from watching one of Corey Sprengel's videos. I can't take credit for this, but you just kind of stretch that tail out, break down those plastics a little bit. Careful not to go too hard and pop the end of the paddle tail off but it's unreal how just giving it a little bit of pull like that, that that thing has so much more movement, even when you're not doing anything. Like that's just the wind popping it back and forth. And just to get way more, way more kick out of that thing, even at super slow speeds, or these have enough action, they're just on the drop, that tail will wobble. Where if you get too stiff of one, when that bait is falling down, which is when you get most of your bites, the tail barely kicks because it's not moving fast enough. So. Bonus points for that. Some of my favorite colors. Something special about electric chicken. That pink with the chartreuse belly. Walleyes just love it. I think chartreuse anything is always good for walleyes, right? And pink is just the most underutilized color for walleyes. Whether it's an X-Wrap, a hair jig, a jig head, a swim bait, there's something special about it. The Live River Shad is another good one which we don't have shad and, and stuff up north, but it looks like to me an emerald shiner. And then you just get that bonus little bit of a chartreuse line down the middle, which like I said, chartreuse, you can never go wrong for walleyes. And then of course, perch, probably the number one forage in all the lakes I fish around here. And it actually has a white tail, which is kind of weird when you first you're like, everything looks so natural about that, but then a white tail, and there's something special about it. I mean, you can see that movement. It's way more exaggerated in the water, having that be a contrasting color. Bunch of different colors, but those are three that I always play around with and start my rotation with. So like I said, it's super important to have your swim baits rigged up straight, because if they're not perfectly straight, they're gonna look wonky in the water. They're either gonna be swimming in at an angle, or they're gonna kind of roll, depending on how fast you're going, and not the good kind of roll, but like flip upside down. So one thing I always do, whether it's any kind of plastic, but especially swim baits, lay that jig head over the top and hold your thumb where that hook should be pointed out to be laying perfectly straight. And then just nick the plastic, give yourself a little line so you can see where that pokes out should be exactly where that tear is. And I know it'll be straight then. So we'll just throw this one on here quick. Watch me botch it now that the pressure's on. Jackpot. You can see she's sitting perfectly straight on that hook shank. So you know you're gonna get the best action out of it. Now there's kind of two different setups. Like I said, right now this kind of post spawn through the early summer bite. It's a little more finessey. It's a little bit lighter heads. I'll do small jigging sweeps, but it's a lot of slow rolling and slow sweeps. That's when I really like like a 7.3 medium light fast. It's a good all around rod with a softer tip. When I'm slow rolling those baits, I don't mind having it kind of load up a hair before I crack them as they're chasing those down. They're getting more active every day. The bite's getting better, but they can still be fussy at 20 degree temperature difference in the morning. They're not absolutely inhaling those baits, they're coming up and nipping at them. So I'll let it load for just a millisecond before reeling into them. 
Now as things progress and I start snapping them way more and as I move into that throwing them at weeds, the cabbage weed coontail bite, that's when I bump up everything. Like I said, jig head size, plastic size. Uh, this one's a 7.1 medium power extra fast. So extra fast is just how fast that rod loads up versus like a moderate might flex all the way back to here. A fast is somewhere up here and extra fast you can just see it immediately goes into backbone, which is important when you're trying to snap your bait out of weeds. And also it's nice for, you don't feel the bites all the time when you're fishing that weed bite. If you're snapping that bait like a hook set every single time and your next time you go to snap, it's boom, your rod is doubled over. So you need that power. And that's when I bump up to like a 10 or 15 pound braid, bump up my leader size and really whoop into them. But right now, the 7.3 medium light for slow rolling. You'll feel them bite and I just hesitate just a millisecond before I crack those fish. So there's so many different specifics that we could dive into. I could talk for three hours about swim baiting for walleyes because everything is different depending on the situation. One of those little minute differences you maybe noticed just in this video, these are the same Syncor Candle Elliott rods, but they look different. Why? <laughs> this is actually their new performance handle. You can see it's much thinner and a little more, in my opinion, finesse And honestly, it's personal preference. I recommend getting one in your hand and seeing what feels best for you. But for me personally, I like the thinner handle for more finesse stuff. And you can just see the extra girth on that bigger OG handle feels really good to me when you are doing big snaps and rips for techniques like ripping swim baits up shallow. I just like that little broader handle. Personal preference, get them in your hand and feel which one makes the most sense to you. Now let's jump into a couple of locations. So right, right now let's specifically talk post summer walleyes before they start transitioning out to their summer locations. I've been religiously using and sticking to Allender's 30 day post spawn rule, which essentially is if you know the general areas or where walleye spawned about 30 days later, the first lip or break on the outside of those areas is where he targets. It's been about 30 days on some of these north central Minnesota lakes since walleye spawned a hair longer in others. There's still fish around those areas. So I picked a random lake here. I've never fished it not trying to blow up anybody's spot and maybe nobody's ever caught a walleye on the spot before but just some stuff that's going to look interesting to me so right here i could see there being some sort of moving water or river or creek coming into the lake walleyes love moving water when it comes to spawn time because they want that current to keep their eggs clean they can't hatch when they're covered in eight inches of muck so i would assume maybe some walleyes came up and slid here and spawn if there's some current I'd be looking, see the edges of these like green areas is kind of the first main drop. You can see where the contour lines start out wider and then right before they tighten up like that is kind of that first main break off of that shoreline. I'd be looking on the edge of that green, so that's nine, 10 feet or so, and fishing along there. Now I'll throw these swim baits up on top if it's windy up in five, six, seven feet of water and just slow roll them and fan cast my way down the break to see if I can catch any fish. Sometimes they're right on top. A lot of the times you find them right before that lip. So if the flat is kind of like this, slowly tapering down and where it crests and drops like that, they're gonna be just kind of on top of that lip before it breaks. Maybe it's seven to 10 feet, maybe it's 10 to 12 feet, but they like to ride that lip kind of like a highway this time of year. Let's pick another spot. Maybe you don't have creeks and rivers and current and bridges to kind of centralize and focus those fish. They'll also just spawn on rocky, gravelly shorelines or points. This right here, I don't know, I see marker buoys. I'm assuming that means there's rocks, shallow water. Yeah, there's little rock symbols. So some walleyes might spawn on there depending on the wind blowing on it. Same deal, I'd start you know, kind of right where that, those contours go from slow tapering to faster and work my way around this thing. Fishing the outside edge first, ideally you scan it with side imaging and look for marks up on top before you go right up to the top. Let's pick another random spot. 
It doesn't always have to be a point either. It doesn't always have to be rocks or gravel either. I know like some of the lakes around the Brainerd area, I've seen walleyes spawning just on shallow sand. And you'll see them come up, if it's a glass calm day around opener, kicking on their side and actually like making magic right there. And there's sand, there's no rock or gravel for about a half mile from where I saw that last year. So it might just be a big sand flat. Could look something like this where it's all, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 feet on top. Get a nice steep break before it drops off into deep water. And sometimes walleyes will spawn on that, but I'll be fishing that same edge with those swim baits and kind of slow rolling them. I'll keep the boat out off the edge. Let's say that lip goes from nine feet to 12, kind of quick, all eight, nine on top, and then breaks off. I'll keep that boat out off the edge, 30, 40 feet from the drop, and just diagonally fan cast and snap it out off the edge of that and slowly work my way down. If I get a bite, mark a waypoint because there's something special there. <laughs> it's so funny how those shallow fish, it seems like if you catch one, there's something different there, whether it's a bottom transition or a little bit of newly emerging weeds or something. And I'll always come back, but I'll work it religiously for 20, 25 minutes, see if I can pick up more fish if I'm getting bites. Uh, but I'll always come back and hit it again later in the day and I might reload. So that's the type of stuff I'm looking for post spawn. Right now, before this early summer transition, there's gonna be fish up shallow. I mean, there's fish up shallow all year long, but right now it's the majority. So get out there and get a few for yourself while the getting is good. And then don't forget, swim baits catch fish all summer long. Once those fish start sliding out off that edge and those weed lines develop, and they start getting nice and thick in like 10 to 14 foot cabbage, you rip a big swim bait through there, you might not get many bites like you do in the spring, but they're gonna be the right ones.